Hey everyone, you may remember one of my older projects, Onyx Glasses. It used the FLCOS display to show the virtual image in front of your eye. Basically super simple extra cheap HoloLens. The glasses used a transparent front lenses made out of plexiglass. Lenses were designed by me and then ordered locally from laser cutting company. The lenses were of course super high quality since they used a industrial grade CO2 laser. Many people bought the DIY keys with lenses in them and said that they really liked them. I've reached a point in my project where I just thought that it can't get really any better in a home workshop setup. Recently I've ordered a new batch of the transparent lenses, but to be honest I was kinda pissed with the local company that cuts them. I was tired of long wait times and small choice of the materials. I've recently been contacted by the Algo Laser company which makes the laser engravers to make a video about their product. I rarely accept this kind of deals since they don't really pay anything, but this time it was something that I could actually use in my projects. At the time it seemed like a perfect solution to my issue, just make my own lenses at home. Of course this being said, this video is sponsored by Algo Laser. Whole device came to me in this huge hardware box which it seems had been through a lot. To be honest I was super scared that it came destroyed so I've started recording just in case. Package has arrived in about 6 days, so I thought that maybe shipping company has cut some corners. I've had so many faulty shipments due to incorrect packing, so I always record when I open stuff. I was pleasantly surprised to see that the device itself had been in fact safely packed. The super banged up outer box was just a safety shell for the more important boxes. Right from the get go you can see that there is no damage and everything is described properly. I like how everything is printed in black, it gives me eco IKEA vibes. I was super fortunate to receive all of this for free directly from the maker. They didn't tell me what I have to say so everything you hear in this video is my honest feedback. I'll start my unboxing with the Honeycomb platform. I'm actually super curious what it will look like in person. I imagined it would have some kind of vacuum outlet on the side to take out any particles. This would greatly impact the whole laser cutting process. You can see that there is a lot of foam padding which prevents any damage. There was also a small promo pamphlet inside. This is what the honeycomb platform looks like. It's basically a flat metal grid with rulers on both sides. I have to give them props for using the centimeters, that's the only proper measuring unit. There's also a metal sheet underneath but it's not really connected to the platform. I'll take it out of the box so you can see better. Don't mind the dog, he's trying to eat the foam. As you can see the metal sheet is not connected to the platform. To be honest with you I'm not even sure why it's there and what it is meant to do. Let's put the platform aside for now. Let's take a look at the main product now, the laser engraver. I've received a slightly more expensive and powerful 10 watt model. 10 watt is powerful enough to cut wood and acrylic. I rarely accept sponsorship deals but this one I felt was super useful to me. Lately I've had a lot of issues with my front lens supplier and this device could fix a lot of them. Algo Laser promised me that it would effortlessly cut through acrylic so I was interested. This basically would mean that I can make the front lenses for my Onyx glasses at home now and so do you. This time inside the box was a huge manual and a consumable pack. When I bought my Ender printer I basically got only QR code with PDF so receiving physical manual is super handy. This is pretty cool, I would feel disrespected if I bought a premium product and got only QR code. Of course reading is still for champs, I work only with image based manuals. I've also got a bunch of certificates which is cool but I don't really care for them and I don't have any use for them. It gives the premium vibes though which is quite nice. And here is the manual, it's quite big but has a lot of pictures, which is the most important part. 
I'll put it aside for now, it will come in handy later on. Let's take a look at the consumable pack now. Inside there were basic things like paintbrush for particles and some zip ties. There was also this big piece of acrylic which will be perfect for testing and these small super thin sheets. I don't know what I will do with the thin pieces, most likely I'll store them for the future. Brush will help with the cleaning for sure. I've also got this huge piece of plywood for testing. Lasers generally don't have any issues with plywood, it should cut right through it. Underneath the foam padding there were all of the engraver pads. Each item has its own slot in the box. Here is the laser itself, it's pretty good looking, definitely nicer than Arthur. As I've mentioned before, it's 10 watt. I've took all of the parts out so you can have a better look. Most of the smaller items are packed in separate bags. The only problem I've got is that the screws are not separated by size. The main module is pretty bulky, it has a lot of great stuff as Wi-Fi, so it's pretty huge. It also has an emergency stop button, which I think I've never seen on a DIY machine before. All of the frame extrusions are marked, so you can easily check which one goes where. I also like the small rulers on the side, I won't probably have any need for them, but it's cool. The main axis came already assembled, which is great because I wouldn't have patience for it. It seems like it's just a one piece which goes onto the extrusion frame. The power adapter is a simple Chinese one, I was fortunate to receive the European version. Ok, so let's see how to actually assemble this thing. There are some safety guidelines, but I don't really follow any safety stuff. Shout out to slicing my finger open gazillion times. Ok, so here is where it starts, the frame assembly. I basically built a square out of the extrusions just like the one on the picture. Now I just need to secure it in place using screws. Each extrusion has pre-drilled holes so it's super easy to assemble. Each screw has to be tightened using the provided Allen key. Now that it's done, I can just slide the main part onto the frame. It went super easy, it just slid onto the extrusions. The whole module moves super smooth, I can't stress enough how smooth it really feels. It feels good just sliding it around. Ok, so now we have to flip the machine and install the corner brackets. For some reason in step 4 I installed one bracket and the rest were put to step 5. I've got no idea why. With all of the brackets now in place I can install the support feet. Those simply screw into the brackets. The machine is now almost ready, you can already imagine how will it work. I love sliding the mine axis, it feels super nice. Now it's time to install the end plates. End plates are being used as belt tensioning, so it's very important to install them correctly. It's very hard to make a mistake at this point, but you never know. You can now install the belt at this point, it was pretty difficult part for me to be honest. The right side went without hassle, but the one with the motor was pretty difficult. I couldn't get it all the way inside using my fingers. I figured out that you can get the belt in place using the smallest allen key that was in the set. You can gently prop it upwards with one hand and push it in with the other. This way it will go in. Ok, so these two steps I've actually skipped, there is no proper way to check the tension without the tensometer. Also fixture height pretty much depends on the thickness of the material which you are going to cut. I've installed this little end stuff though, it's absolutely necessary. 
On the next pages you can see the installation tips for each laser module. Laser is being held in place with two thumb screws, you can even use only one if you want to. Just make sure that you actually attach them to the back plate. On the next pages you can see the installation tips for the 20W module and air pump. I don't have either of them at the moment, but I will grab the pump someday, it's a pretty useful addition. I've installed the main electronics on the front part of the frame, it uses only two screws to attach. It's a pretty big box, but it has some nice stuff inside. The main cable installation had some issues as well, I feel like the pictures don't show it clearly how you do it. Of course I've managed to get it right with some thinking. The harness is designed in such way that there is little room for user error. With enough patience anyone should get it done. The Wi-Fi antenna is optional since you can use the laser with USB-C connection. And just like that it's fully assembled. It took me about 20 minutes to get it done. I took some breaks though, so you could install it even faster. I've moved the laser up to my workspace, it's super lightweight so you can move it anywhere. I'll start the testing using the acrylic sheet which came with the laser. You can leave the paper on top of it, but I chose not to. I've removed the paper only partially to prevent the rest of the acrylic from scratches. You can't see it just yet, but I've made a huge mistake right there. Laser is super strong, so it's currently burning a square hole in my floor. Let's not tell anyone. Here you can see the initial results of the built-in cutting test. One of the squares fell out right next to the hole in my floor. I wish I've received something honeycomb shaped which could prevent this. On a serious note, laser went really deep into my floor. Be careful with it. Next up is the full cutting test. This test shows you how much speed and how many passes you need to cut stuff. It's perfect for all kinds of materials. Here is how it looks like when it's finished. You can clearly see which settings to use. The F letter means speed. Let's see if I can cut out the onyx lens. The shape came out almost perfect. It's a shame that it's not transparent at all. Let's see if it cuts out the combiner as well. I might need to use a faster settings in the future, but it definitely works. Let's see how it handles the polarizer film. Just like before, speed was way too low, it cuts it down, it's just too powerful at lower speeds. I've adjusted the speeds a bit and now you can see that it absolutely works with polarizer films. Let's see how it handles the plywood. Plywood is a super easy material to work with, so as expected it cut it perfectly. Most of the squares fell out by themselves, which indicates that it can be cut very easily. On Algo Laser website you can find all kinds of stuff which you can laser out for free. There's a bunch of puzzles and stuff like that. I've used to buy this kind of puzzles as a kid, so it makes me a bit nostalgic. And now for the main event, can you make the next gen Onyx lenses with this laser? I'm a bit scared that it won't work, since the material is translucent. This means that the laser goes right through it. Turns out that you can in fact laser cut this type of material, just with lower speeds. I've put some spray paint on top and run the Onyx lens program, it actually did it. You can perfectly see the lens outline. It is on top of the protective film, so you can just peel it off. Here it is without a protective film, it's super impressive that it made it this good. The material is perfect for the onyx glasses. As you can see the laser cut the lens shape without any kind of issue. The only thing left to do now is to remove the excess plastic with Dremel tool. After that it will be ready to install. The edges are a bit rough as you can tell but it's fine, the printer will smooth them out. The 3D files are generated in a way so it poses automatically for lens installation. When it poses, you just pop the lens in and resume. It's a generally a good idea to change the speed to lowest for a couple of layers. 
This will prevent the lenses from lifting up. After a while you can change the speed back to the regular. And that's pretty much how you pin the frame with new graphite lenses. It's a super easy process. With the front frame ready you can put the rest of the glasses together as in previous versions. You can find a detailed guide on my channel. The laser files for the lenses will be available to everyone on my Patreon. As for the laser engraver itself you can buy it from the link in the description down below this video. Thanks for watching everyone and once again huge thanks to Algo Laser. And of course huge thanks to my patrons, more videos coming soon.